I believe that spaces can be beautiful and they can be functional all at the same time. And I want to show you some ways that I made this functional space beautiful without breaking the bank. The propagation station is something that is very practical to have inside of a greenhouse, but for me it also adds this bit of artistic vibe and I just love it. I've wanted to make one of these for a while and we just used some scrap wood that we had. The first piece that you saw with all those holes, you do not have to use a backboard with holes. That is something that I took from something else and so it already had the holes and so I just built it around those holes. So instead of having to pre-drill, I was able to skip that step. Now what you see me doing here is using our hole bit and putting some holes into these wooden planks. This is where our little container that you saw is going to sit right inside. I did give the edges a quick sand just to smooth it out a bit. And this next part, this is where you really just see creativity flow. I, I had no real plan. You know, it's like I mentioned before, it's abstract. You can do literally anything that you want and call it art. If it speaks to you, if you love it, then you do it. If you like circular shapes, make things with circular shapes. If you like pointed edges, do some pointed edges. Like you can create things that will speak directly to you. If you have a desire to create a space that you will absolutely love, take some time and think about really what makes you happy. Are you a person who loves abstract? What kind of shapes do you like? Like all of those things I believe that we can bring into our garden spaces to make it that much more enjoyable. So what you see me doing here is just going with whatever I'm feeling. <laughs> I knew I wanted triangular shapes and so I'm just playing with the tape and just trying to get the shapes that I that I want and I'm using a razor to make those points sharp. The tool that I'm using to help me with my straight cuts is called a speed square. Um, some people just call it a square. Now it's so interesting, who named this a square when it's a triangle? Like these are some of the questions that I ask myself while I'm using and figuring out how to use different tools. Why didn't they just call this a triangle? Why, why, why is it a square, but it's a triangle? Like, does anybody know? I mean, it doesn't even have the same amount of sides. I digress. <laughs> Okay, so I took my favorite type of spray paint and I just sprayed painted over all of my shapes as well as my little blocks right here. And I absolutely love the way it turned out. It's so simple. Shapes I just did. It didn't take me a long time to do it. I absolutely love doing projects like this that are just straightforward and they don't take forever. The turnaround time is very, very quick. I just absolutely love it. And I love the way that this turned out. I mean, it is just so beautiful, at least to me. The next step in creating this propagation station was just to attach our block to our backboard. And that was it. I was able to take it into the greenhouse and just screw it right into the wall like it was just perfect, straightforward, easy to do, but I feel like it just adds such a nice touch. So I had these laying around, I think a friend gave them to me maybe a year or so ago. I spray painted them, they came from Ikea, and they fit perfectly on a rod that I already had in the house. And so everything was just working together, unplanned, but working together. And what you see me doing here is just making my holes for the screws. And then I'm just going to attach some curtain rod brackets into this space. And then I'm just going to put our rod right across that. By this time, our containers were dry. So I went ahead and took this time to drill some holes in the bottom so that whenever I do plant into these, the water will be able to drain. Here's what the propagation station looks like before adding our little containers. And it's just so amazing to see how much impact adding those containers really does to this space. And this was truly an afterthought. 
but I'm so happy that it flowed into my funnel because I feel like it really does elevate the whole idea of a propagation station. Once the plant clippings that are in the glass containers have formed roots, I could then take those clippings with the roots and plant them into this little container. Or I could also grow some plants in the container and then clip from those plants and then root them and make new plants. So there are several different options that I can use with this propagation station. Here I am adding some washi tape around each of these glass containers and it does serve two purposes. First of all, it's cute. And then second of all, I really wanted to add to the grip factor of the glass jar. I didn't know how much it was going to slip. So I thought I could use this washi tape to make sure that the glasses were nice and snug. Now, so far, it has been good. We have had no slippage, and so it's working out very, very well. I purchased these glass containers from Amazon, and I'll definitely leave the link down below if you're interested in getting these and starting your own propagation station. At this point, I probably had already had these glass jars for a year because I bought them thinking I was going to be able to start a propagation station in our living room, but I had not yet found a way to do it successfully. And so this made perfect sense when I was thinking through greenhouse design. Okay, so next up is going to be these burlap shade cloths. Now y'all know that it's been hot. Like it's been so hot. Just think about that heat and magnified. I don't even know how much you can magnify it, but just know when you walk into a space like this, even with the exhaust fan, even with the regular fan, like it's a hot space. It's doing its job, right? Now I knew that this was going to be a space that I not only wanted to be able to grow our plants in, but I also wanted to be able to come in here and just sit in here. It's like being outside, but inside. I imagine having the most perfect quiet times in here, just breaking away and just being able to, you know, just spend that quiet time that's important for us all to have. So I knew it was going to be very important for me to get on getting some shade cloth right away because these real fields out here y'all these 104 and 105 like it ain't no joke because the bamboo is a resource that is readily available for us i went ahead and used the bamboo for our rods this was such a great find. I found this huge bag of these rings with these little clips at the end at our ReStore for $4. They are so cute. I did attach these to the rod because I'm thinking in the future, I mean, we could use these for so many different things. I can hang and dry herbs up here. I can place a another rod through the hoops and use that for something. I can hook plants up there. These really give so many different options and so I'm just so happy it was such a great find. So here you see me cutting the burlap to size. What I did was stretched it from one wall to the other and then I added 18 inches I believe because I wanted to make sure that I was going to have enough burlap. And what I did right here, y'all, was I accidentally cut through both pieces instead of just the one. And so that was a mistake that I have to fix. Um, I have to do some <laughs> sewing or something. And although I did get the whole roll of burlap, I did not have enough burlap to make an extra panel. So that is something that I just had to try and fix. It didn't end up being super noticeable. So when the weather cools, I do plan to get up there and go ahead and sew that together so it's nice and secure. You can see from that clip that I'm definitely a fast learner and I checked <laughs> the second time because I was not about to cut another piece wrong.
Okay, so what is about to happen is we have the rod that's going straight in the middle, right? I'm going to take my piece that's long enough to go from one wall all the way to the other wall and I'm just going to toss it over the rod and then those push pins that you saw, I'm going to attach the burlap using push pins. Now I wanted to do something that was going to be simple to take down when it's time. This shade cloth could really be up for another three months because we have a long summer. It doesn't really cool off until the end of October. It takes a while here. <laughs> but I absolutely love the cozy vibe that it gives. It definitely gives just that nice, warm, cozy feel inside of the greenhouse. It's like getting a little piece of fall way before fall. <laughs> the push pins actually worked really well. On some areas, I was able to just use my thumb to push them in, and then there were other areas that I actually needed to use the hammer to lightly tap it in. And here is what it looks like to have this side all the way done. And so now I just have to finish up doing the other side. One thing I do have to say about this burlap, y'all, it is so hairy, like all the little particles that's falling from this burlap. You can't see it well in the video, but I'm covered in it. And look how sweaty I am. I was seriously putting in the work. And yes, I had the door closed because nobody got time for bugs flying in there and mosquitoes. They don't have an invitation. Look at how cute these rings are. So I wanted to play with the idea of adding a rod. I wanted to see if it was going to be something I wanted to do right now or if I would hold off. And so this is the look of the rod, something I can come back to at any time, but I did remove it. <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> After the shade cloth was up, I did water our little plants, and then I also sprayed down the whole greenhouse, the floor, the table, because like I said, those burlap hairs were so serious. Those fibers are like crazy. So I sprayed everything down, including the table, and I allowed it to dry because the next process is sealing our table so that we can preserve it for as long as possible. So the sealer that I chose to use is the Thompson's water seal, which was suggested to me in the comment section below another one of our videos but I loved this stuff. Like it was so thin and so easy to apply. It's water-based, so it didn't have any strong odor. I just found that this was very, very easy and a very, very simple process to do. So speaking of sealing, I don't know if I share with you guys that Thomas did put the screens in he built these screen frames and y'all i just been sitting in here nothing can get me i mean my heart is just all the way happy he was able to use some screen that we already had sitting around as well as some you guessed it scrap wood so i went ahead and put a coat of the sealer on our screen frames as well Because we were having just extremely high temperatures, I went ahead and put our little seedlings out here and look, we have sprouting broccoli. The evenings have been so perfect to just come out to the garden and look around as well as harvest whatever we could harvest. And so me and these two little beauties are going to harvest up some things real quick and see what we can't use for dinner. We have been harvesting baskets upon baskets every single day. What a blessing. So I asked you guys last time if you wanted to see me do a nice, good clean of the garden. Um, if you were into those type of things. And I had a resounding yes, girl. Show us show us the crazy and so our next video will be me showing you the crazy and also combining that with a garden tour 
and clean up so that we can just do it yeah, all at once. And so I am really, really, really looking forward to sharing that experience with you guys. Listen, if you made it this far, you are just so incredible. Thank you. Whoa. Thank you so much for joining us on this thing That's that we really call our freedom song thank you so much for all of your love and all of your support for our family like we have no words that can really express our gratitude like it's just mind-blowing every single video to get comments and have conversations with you guys like to have a whole community of people who you now can call garden friends it's just such a unique experience and one that we greatly 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 appreciate if you guys loved what you saw today please let me know down in the comments like what do you think about that shade cloth and do you have any experience using shade cloth in the actual garden please let me know because i am looking for some inexpensive options. I'll see you guys next time.